JRP performance. What's going on, brother? Yeah. So today we just wanted to kind of lay out our engine building tools and just give you guys a rundown of what we use here at JRP Performance as far as uh, measurements and blueprinting the bottom ends go and all that good stuff. So we're just gonna do a quick walkthrough of everything over here so you guys get an idea of the tools that get used during engine building, uh, why we use some of the things we use, why it's necessary, um, why we invest a lot of money in them. Um, so let's just start over here by the <clears throat> rod bolt stretch gauges, which we made a video on so you guys already know what these are. Basically, this goes on the top of the rod bolt and this, this bottom end that goes on the bottom of the rod bolt. And basically you measure the free state of the rod, essentially when it's not torqued or stretched. Uh, and then you basically torque it to the lowest value that the manufacturer gives you. And then you see if it meets the spec. And then you can, from there, you can pretty much play with the stretch value as much as you'd like to get more or less stretch, depending on if it's a drag setup or a street motor. Uh, for instance, if it's just a street motor and it's not gonna be seeing a lot of horsepower, you don't need to go crazy with the stretch. You can just leave it at the minimum or you know, slightly above minimum, where in a drag motor, you kind of want to go higher than the stretch, that the minimum stretch, I should say, and kind of try to end up at the higher value. So that's that. These are the rod bolt stretch gauges. Over here, we got the dial bore, uh, dial bore gauges. So we got one over here that measures uh, two to six inch. And then over here, we got one that measures 1.4 to 2.5 inches. So essentially what we do is we use these for the Evo 8 and 9 uh rod bearings so rod journals i should say for the crankshaft uh, this is how we determine clearance essentially what we do is we basically um measure the rod the journal with a micrometer and then we put it in this micrometer vice this is a micrometer vice as you can see it has uh, these two little protecting devices or pads or whatever you want to call them and then we lock them in there and then we would basically put a uh, the proper size uh, adapter on the actual dial indicator, the or you just I should say, and then we what we do is we zero out the basically the dial bore gauge to the micrometer reading, and then from there we can go and check our rods and you know torque them to, to spec with the bearings in there, and then see if we you know meet the proper rod clearance that we're trying to achieve. <coughs> Over here we have the two to six, so on the Evo tens um since the rod journals are bigger we just need this we don't even need this because they're they're already bigger than the evo 8 and 9 and then um but for even on the evo 8 and 9s we use these for the mains so essentially the same thing applies we use a micrometer we'll, we'll measure the journal uh diameter and then we'll put it in the actual uh, micrometer vice and then we'll zero it out and then we'll get our clearance like that um so talking about micrometers, these are micrometers over here. So we got a Fowler three to four inch over here, which we use for piston to wall clearance measurements. Essentially all the Evo pistons are about 3.3 and a half inches. So this works perfectly. We basically just measure the skirt wherever the manufacturer tells us to, and then we zero out our uh, dial bore gauge to that. And then we can basically bolt on a torque plate, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and measure our piston to wall clearance and distortion and all that good stuff or bad stuff <laughs> So over here, we got a set of Mitsutoyo um, Micrometers again. These are for the raw journals for the Evo 8 and 9s uh, Basically, we're, we got a 1 to 2 inch. We got a 2 to 3 and then we got a 0 to 1 inch. So this I can basically measure wrist pin diameter, which is very important on high horsepower engines. So you want to have proper clearance uh, from the wrist pin to the actual rod small end which has a bushing in it or if it's an aluminum rod it's aluminum so you gotta be very careful with that stuff you don't want it to be too tight or too loose because it can make a lot of noise if it's loose and if it's tight obviously it can rock up and you know cause a lot of issues like dulling and stuff like that so this is what we use that stuff for over here you guys can see we have some dedicated um piston ring compressors uh, essentially what they are is they're tapered and basically if you get like an 86 millimeter piston set, they're slightly smaller than that. And this will basically allow you to um, put an 86 millimeter piston in with the rings without having to like, you know, use one of those manual tools that, you know, old school guys would use to use and all that stuff and, you know, risk breaking the rings and all that stuff. 
So these are these come in very handy for so for the E ones obviously we use the 85, 85, 5 and the 86 millimeter. Uh, for the 4G64 stuff, obviously 86.5 is where they start, but we usually end up using 87 or 87.5. Um, the 955 you see over here is for GTR. Uh, and you know, we just buy them as you know we need them. Um, these are what we use most of the time. Over here, we got a small scale so we can just double check the balance that gets back from the machine works to make sure basically they did what they were supposed to do, what we paid for, what the customer paid for essentially. Um, for the rods, we use a different tool, but this is for the pistons, wrist pins, rings. Um, that's pretty much it, yeah. That's what we use it for. So we just double check it and we make sure they are on weight and they're they, every basically piston and conrod assemblies within five tenths of a gram of each other. That's what we shoot for. Sometimes we try to go lower than that. If we do, great. If we don't, then <laughs> we always do. So we've never had a instance that you know we've had to basically take it back to the machine shop. So they're always balanced like that. The cracks on the 4G63 or any four cylinder uh, for that matter is balanced by itself. So you don't put bob weights on it like a V8 or you know um, a different engine like that. So they get balanced by themselves. Like all the manly, all the billet cranks or even OEM cranks, we balance them by themselves. So it has to be balanced properly or else you're going to have an engine that's going to essentially destroy itself in the long run. Uh, over here, we have a Fowler dial bore gauge. This goes from 1.4 to 6. Um, I used to use this before. I don't really use it anymore just because I have the Mitsutoya stuff that's a lot more accurate. Um, that's that over here. We just have a basic Harbor Freight, basically magnetic vice or whatever you want to call it basically this sticks onto metal uh whenever you turn it on so on the 4g63 stuff it works 4v11 stuff it's kind of harder to do so you kind of have to like get it on the main cap and then this is used to basically check crankshaft and play which is very important that's your thrust bearing clearance you don't want it to be too tight obviously that can cause a lot of problems and if it's too loose it can cause crank walk and all kinds of funny stuff um over here we have a set of happens to be Maco, but we have a few sets of uh, fuel gauges. So basically with this, we check rod to crankshaft journal side clearance, uh, which is also very, very important. A lot of people don't check this, but it's very important, especially when it comes to aluminum rods because they expand faster than steel. So you really need to check the side clearance on those. Um, and also another thing that's very important, obviously, is the ring end gaps that we check with these. Very important tool as well. This is a straight edge. So this is a perfectly machined piece of steel that we can basically put on top of the block or the head and then basically one fuel gauge is underneath it. Essentially what we're trying to check is distortion. So let's say uh, somebody has a head lift or somebody brings us an engine and uh, or a head or whatever and they're trying to see if it's reusable without being resurfaced. We can put this tool on top of it, run some fuel gauges underneath it, see if we can pass it or not. Um, essentially you want no distortion whatsoever, but there is a specific level that the OEM basically gives you that's acceptable a range I should say but uh, we try to shoot for zero on every single build so we really don't use this tool that often honestly over here we've got some paint markers essentially with uh, rod bolts uh, main studs head studs stuff like that we basically mark it as, as soon as we torque them so we know for a fact that we torque them so you know I don't have to overthink whether I've torqued something or not. So right after I finish my torque sequence, I'll go back with the marker and I'll mark them down. Um, over here, we just have a piece of paper, if you want to call it that. Basically, when we blueprint an engine, we make a full list of every every measurement that we take and then we take a picture at the end. And then we have a dedicated photo album and our computers that we basically answered all the data. So, you know, we don't lose that because it's very important to have that um what else let's see over here we got some files these are some diamond files these are some regular files so essentially once we grind the piston rings over here with our electronic uh, ring grinder um basically what i have to do is i have to go back and i have to deburr all those sharp edges that occurs from grinding the ring so the end of the ring that touches the actual grinding surface of the wheel you have to basically take all those high high spots off and uh, if you don't, basically the, that piston ring is not going to rotate freely in the piston and it can cause problems in the long run. So that's why we use those. And then over here we have a torque plate, which we've talked about again in the, in the previous video. 
Um, as you can see, this is dedicated for a 4G63, but you can use it on a 4G64 because I believe this goes up to 87 or 88 millimeters. So basically what that does is that simulates the head being bolted on top of the block and our machinists basically use this whenever they're doing the final honing of uh, the pistons that we give them. So when they set the piston to wall clearance, they use this torque plate. And then when it gets back, we double check their work by putting this torque plate on with the head gasket that was used with the studs that they used at the time of torque plating. And uh, basically, you know, we make sure there's no um, out of roundness or any taper in the cylinder and the piston to wall is basically set to the desired piston to wall that we basically gave to the machine shop. Um, and the last tool over here is just a simple Werner caliper. It's a, it happens to be a Mitatoria one. We love the Mitatoria stuff because they're very accurate. So let's say I'm trying to measure something that's not like super critical. I'll use this. Let's say I'm just trying to measure a rod bolt length to look at like a spec sheet and see how long that bolt needs to be for that certain stretch or whatever. I'll use this gauge over here. And then uh, over here we have our basically all of our built stuff that's in the works. So as you can see, we use king bearings. I'm a big, you know, big fan of king bearings. Never had issues with them. Um, they're always, all, um, I, would, I wanna say 95% of the time they're dead on, on the clearances that we wanna be. So we don't have to swap sets of bearings. Sometimes you do have to swap sets, but with other manufacturers, you have to do that a lot more often. And then we have a bunch of ARP um, hardware over there, such as main studs, head studs, uh, Evo 8, 9, 10, uh, we have some cams over there. We got some pistons and rods that are just, you know, customer builds. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then this is also a rod vise. I don't think I've talked about this. This is just an aluminum rod vise. We use this so we don't have to use this vise to basically measure our clearances because this is steel. This is aluminum. So on a, when we're trying to measure clearances on a steel rod, you don't want to crush it with a regular vise. So it helps out a lot. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Just wanted to give you guys an idea of the tools that we use when we do engine building. Stay tuned. We got a bunch of more videos coming up for you guys.